So in, in general, if you if you can make a living uh, having having a, a, a good salary um, somehow, um, and the, but live here for where the, where the costs are lower, then it's uh, better. And of course, the women are beautiful. That everybody knows, right? Привет! Greetings from Odessa, Mama, down here near to the port in Kolonad. And in today's Expats in Ukraine video, I'm here with my friend who has appeared in many times in my vlogs from Odessa over the last few years. It's Arthur. He's uh, German and he has been living here in Odessa for quite a number of years. I think at this stage you already, years, guess, yeah. yeah, he expatriated, uh, expatriated a good few years ago. So I'm super excited to actually give you a, an insight about why he chose to live in Odessa, having come from Germany and what the city has to offer. And especially from also a financial and professional point of view about how you could also structure that kind of move because there's some really important lessons in how Arthur uh, managed to make that, that, that move and how he set himself up to be successful here in Ukraine. So, willkommen, Arthur. Uh, maybe tell us first a little bit about your background, um, you know, where you're from originally, uh, where you grew up, and yeah, what languages you also spoke growing up because these are all kind of relevant to the story. Yes, yes. yes. Well, I've, I was born in the Soviet Union, uh, um, and um, then, for as I was ten years, my parents moved to Germany, and that was in the beginning of the 90s, and where all the waves of the ethnically Germans returned back to Germany, and uh, lived in Germany for 20 years, uh, studied there, got my PhD, and then at some point, uh, uh, with my friend Michael, we decided to move to Odessa and uh, change our life in this way. All right, so you were actually born in the Soviet Union and uh, you grew up as, I guess, uh, a Russland Deutsche, because you were allowed Russland to come. Deutsche, <laughs> exactly. exactly, so for you, those of you who don't know, Russland Deutsche is the term for the people who are ethnically German in the Soviet Union who got to basically move back to Germany. We moved back, they have been in those lands for a long time, but they got to move back in the early 90s. Uh, so you would have grown up speaking German, Russian, uh, how was that? No, uh, only Russian. Only, only Russian. Only Russian. I had to learn German as a foreign language. Okay, so you uh, came when you were uh, quite young to Germany or, you know, how was that? I was 10 years old. I was, 10 years uh, old. 92, 92, yes. 92 when you got to go back to Germany, as they say at the time. <laughs> I, did, uh, I came to Russia 200 years ago and then I get, went back. <laughs> exactly, that's if you know about the Russland Deutsche. Uh, so you grew up speaking Russian at home, uh, but you also then obviously uh, are German and grew up in Germany. Uh, so you already spoke German and Russian pretty well. You obviously speak fluent English. And then how did it come about that you decided to come back well, say come back back to the former Soviet Union and come to Odessa. What was the thinking behind it uh, and why did you choose Odessa ultimately? Well, the, the primary motivation was uh, um, just a vacation that uh, we had taken together on a road trip through various Eastern European countries. And, uh, and Odessa just caught our attention and, uh, and really not just caught our attention, we, we really liked it so much so that we have promised, we have actually sworn to each other that we are going to live here at some point and uh, also achieve financial freedom. And where the financial freedom part was the primary part, of course, but as a, uh, as a city to, to where, where we would like to live, Odessa was a great option. And uh, it, 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 for some reason, it immediately felt, we felt free here. We felt comfortable here and we felt, um, um, I don't know, it was exciting. Maybe maybe it's also part of, of that period at that point. We when was this? What year was this around? Uh, that was 10 years ago, 2011. 2011. Yes. So before I mean, the revolution, wait, wait, and before we, the price we, changes. We, we moved to 2011, no. but the travel was, was in 2008. Yes. So, so you already inspired on that trip in 2008. You thought, okay, I like this 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 country, this city, yes. uh, and you want you thought about already moving uh, to Odessa at that point. Yes, yes. So we thought of arranging our financial uh, situation and and the situation in life in general in such a way that we can move here eventually. 
Okay, move here eventually. So it was like a three-year plan uh, yeah. to get yeah, it more, set up. More or less, yes, more or less. Because back then, most people don't realize that Ukraine was not uh, as much cheaper to live in in terms of cost of living as it is today. Because back in, I don't know, what, did you see, what was the difference in cost of living when you were considering moving? Uh, well, the the Grivna was, I think, uh, the price to the euro was uh, 11, 11 Grivna to one euro. And now it's uh, 30 Grivna to one euro, yeah. right? But there has so been some inflation. There has been between. some inflation, of course. Uh, the prices have increased, uh, uh, but uh, not so much as uh, as the inflation. Right? Okay, okay, so for you, when you were looking at maybe it was about, well, say, 30% cheaper maybe than living in the West, yeah. not like today where it's a it, lot, it, it's three it times cheaper. Where, where, you, where you look at I mean, if the restaurants, for example, as there's not such a big price difference as, for example, in uh, real estate. Yeah. Real estate is you have a factor of 10 or so yeah. difference uh, uh, between, let's say, uh, Munich or so yeah. and, and Odessa. Because I also lived in Munich before, um, before I came to Eastern Europe uh, a lot more. So you had this three-year plan. You decided to put it. How did you achieve financial uh, independence? Uh, because you're moving from Germany. Because one of the big objections that I always hear uh, from people who are kind of maybe attracted by the idea of mo moving to Eastern Europe. It tends to be guys who are a bit younger. Maybe in the situ situation you were in 2008, I'm guessing you were in your 20s at the time. And uh, it's like, what am I going to do? Ukraine is a poor country. How can I work there? Uh, they haven't really got um, you know, a good idea about how to set themselves up for financial independence in terms of geolocation independence, right? Because uh, obviously things are cheaper here, but the commensurate salaries, of course, are, are also uh, a lot uh, lower. So how did you set yourself up? Because you were doing it before it was even popular, maybe to be a digital nomad. I don't know, maybe people had started it doing started it. It started already, yeah. yes, yes. I mean, the reasoning behind it was to to escape, escape the the rat race, to, to be, to be uh, caught up in some, you know, nine to five job, to, to work all day and to, to be caught up in, in some big debt to finance your uh, expensive apartment. To and, and real the life prospects were kind of dull in Germany and, and essentially it was boring to, uh, for us to live there. And um, so the decision was we don't want to live a life like this, I mean, independently of Odessa even, yeah. right? And uh, so we said, okay, we're going to change that. And, uh, and uh, so at some point we, I mean, we had good jobs, right? Um, uh, I, I worked at uh, Ernst & Young, Michael worked at Porsche and uh, as uh, I was a financial mathematician, he was an engineer there and, and, and another friend of ours was also there and we all, all together, we just decided we want to quit. I mean, we, we, didn't, we, we didn't have a big plan, we wanted to start a company, but you know, I mean, the third guy really believed, believed in it, we sort of, you know, got along, uh, went along. <laughs> and um, yeah, well, but it was more important to us uh, to risk it and to say, okay, um, at some point I, I told to myself, um, I mean, if, if, if it doesn't work out, I'm ready to live in the jungle and, you know, go f and fish all day. And <laughs> <laughs> that was your plan B, jungle. There's no jungles around the so I guess you were going to go to Asia or to Africa. I, or something. I guess it wasn't really a plan, but more a reflection of my readiness to risk it yeah. for, for a better future. So. How did you go about uh, implementing that? Because I, obviously I know that you did set up a trading company and something that allowed you to uh, arbitrage the cost of living differential uh, versus you know, the ability to earn money internationally, we'll say, i.e. online. Well, um, we essentially the way it worked out, we, we quit our jobs, we started this new project, which we quit uh, quite, quite soon um, after that and, uh, and started this horse racing betting project. Um, and um, the third guy didn't really want to join it, so it's it's Michael and I who have started it, and we essentially had a few thousand euro or so savings uh, that would last for a few months here or so, yeah. and it didn't last for a long time, and um, uh, we, well, the way it happened is actually in in my uh, at my job at Ernst and Young, I, I read a a book on financial mathematics and there was a chapter on horse racing so uh, and uh, the way you would you could bet make bets and compute the probability and then and, and your expected return on, um, on 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 that sport and i said okay um, why don't we collect the data and check it out and simulate it whether we would make money if if we 
if we actually uh, did it. So you basically, uh, you investigated different options that you had with your skill set about how you can make money basically online, right? Uh, yes. In Grossomoto, and then you took a risk and that uh, that would work, you invested your time into figuring it out, and then obviously you had the success, so you were well, able to... Well, that's the short story, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, it, it was much more difficult than it sounds because it, it took us several years until it actually started to bring money. And, uh, and in all those years, we had to take on different jobs. I actually uh, worked for a different horse racing betting company online, um, which, I <laughs> which I actually only um, have encountered because of this third guy who who initially joined us and he, he went working for that company but it wasn't prestigious enough for him you know to to, to earn money uh, betting on the races okay. and so, so he, he stuck his nose up at it so, so he <laughs> said okay recommend me to to, to this company um, if, if he wants to leave anyway yeah. so then i went in and i had the chance to uh, to earn quite good money it was seven thousand dollars per month or so okay. And uh, I split the salary between Michael and myself, and uh, and uh, and so he could had also money to live from, so we both could you know continue working on the project we actually want to build. Okay, excellent. So you did have to invest. It wasn't a get rich quick scheme, as I think what you're trying to say. You actually had to invest a good bit of time, figure out how you're going to um, uh, pay for your cost of living here in Odessa in the meantime, because it wasn't. The huge price difference that there is today, unfortunately, back then it was maybe 30% is what I remember being more or less cheaper, uh, which is still good, but it wasn't like it is today, which is probably you know half, we could say even less than half uh, the cost of living. So you had to figure out how to, uh, in, in the meantime, while you figure it out, how you would be able to obviously how be financially independent, we'll say, uh, uh, and location independent, you needed to have kind of a stopgap and a plan to work online, but it was still working online at the end of the day. It was uh, working online, yes, and uh, the point I want to emphasize is it's not like it was a worked out plan, right? Yeah. We had to figure it out on the way and the opportunities presented this, uh, themselves only because we had actually risked, risked it in the, in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, um, so, um, so these, these kind of lessons were really valuable, you know, if you, for us, the priorities were clear and we wanted to risk it and, uh, and we, uh, we continued working until something would work out. So at the beginning I worked, then Michael worked for, he had to go back to Germany and, uh, and, and work for a company to earn money for us both again, right? So first I and then him. And at some point uh, the project actually started to make money and uh, now it does it earns money passively so it's an automatic trading bot on on the races so it makes places bets automatically on the races and and, and earns money like this perfect but, yeah and um you also have a, a secondary project that you started afterwards which is maybe something you're maybe i don't know if you're more passionate are you more passionate about it? it's like a research lab for artificial intelligence right so it's related to your probably more yes, academic yes. studies yes I, at heart i was always a scientist essentially and uh, the making money part is a life's necessity that you have to face um, but um, i mean one of the reasons i left academia is is, is was what is, is because academia was disappointing uh, because of the many restrictions and uh, you have to publish many papers on topics you don't really care about and um, even though at my life it was uh, uh, quite liberal but in general the prospects were we're not so good and that's what many scientists complain about okay. so so the dream uh, was to to do science on my own terms okay yeah yeah i understand so, so you set that up here in odessa yes yeah, so it's uh, yeah exactly do you think ukraine is a good place for uh to set up such a research lab or are there better places well generally if if the your primary objective is to set up a research lab maybe odessa is is not the best best place honestly i mean it is a it is a big city has 18 universities or so there are competent people here but it's not like the science hub of you know uh, of the world okay um, that makes sense but but uh, but we managed to find competent people around here too so you have to search a bit longer and uh, and, and take a few drawbacks for example i mean in the in the in, in the area of research uh, where we focused in, which was algorithmic in information theory, and there's just no specialists here. So we had to take a, an, a neighboring uh, research field in, in math and um, theory of computation. So the, there are much more people around. So in Odessa, we can also find specialists. So they had to, you know, learn some, some neighboring research field, but managed it and then could 
could help us along with the with the research. Okay, perfect. Tell me things that you prefer about living in Odessa versus living in Germany, because especially it's topical at the moment. We have this, you know, when we're filming this in the middle of November and there's like a crisis on the Polish border with Belarus because there's a lot of people from, um, you know, the Middle East, Africa, who've gone there hoping eventually to get to Germany, right? So it might seem a lot counterintuitive, counterintuitive for a lot of people that uh, Germans want to leave and come to a country like Ukraine, uh, which is considered, well, economically, just objectively, it is poorer overall. Uh, but why do you like what are the things you like about living here in Odessa over living in Germany? Uh, and also maybe things that you prefer in Germany, if there are any at all <laughs> that you prefer. Um, well, to me, Germany has become a pretty dull place. And uh, it, and it's not even a, a, some, some cognitive conclusion. Every time I come there, apart from seeing friends and family, of course, the country itself uh, uh, appears quite dull to me. And uh, uh, in German, trostlos. <laughs> Uh, which is some, something like hopeless and, and uh, futureless. And uh, uh, I would think Germany is the better country to, for working, um, but here is definitely be better for, for living. So if you, if you can make a living uh, getting some Western salary or good salary, um, uh, definitely living here is better to me at least. I mean, uh, I mean for various people it might, might be different. Um, I don't know. I, f I feel just freer. Um, the I mean, obviously, in many countries there are you know um, uh, uh, difficult situations. Um, but uh, the the fact that the law is not is not enforced as strictly as in Germany, for example, uh, is definitely a contribution that life is here more free, and people just don't care much about what laws are made and what the government does because it's a corrupt anyway and. Uh, um, and then people go by their business and uh, in Germany uh, there are much more law-abiding and uh, they, they might be against it um, uh, totally but still obey it and um, and uh, I like um, the mentality of, of, of the people um, I feel somehow <laughs> very comfortable with them I mean, of course in my case uh, another reason is, of course, the language, right? I speak the language uh, fluently here, uh, Russian, right? Um, which is in Odessa, everybody speaks Russian. And um, that's, of course, a big factor if you, if you want to come here. And another thing is, you know, in, in Germany, there's uh, lots of rain and, uh, and, uh, and they joke even, yeah, uh, oh, you see, the summer has come. Yes, the rain has become warmer. <laughs> and, uh, and this is not the case here. I mean, uh, there are a lot of sunny days throughout, throughout the year, which is a big contribution to the overall mood. I mean, it's, it's nothing to, un to, be, uh, to underestimate. So in, in general, if you, if you can make a living uh, having, having a, a, a good salary um, somehow, um, and the, but live here for where, the, where the costs are lower, then it's uh, better. And of course, the women are beautiful. That everybody knows, right? And uh, there's uh, you don't have 64 genders, <laughs> and uh, you have two genders, and uh, and and you know norm normal men and women, and not uh, not the exaggerations and ex that you observe in, in many Western countries. Do you think that you would ever move back to Germany? No, definitely no. not. Yeah. May maybe I would move to some other country. Yeah, maybe, but Germany, most certainly not. Okay, so auf Wiedersehen, Deutschland. Auf, auf Wiedersehen, Deutschland. <laughs> super, super. Auf nimmer Wiedersehen. <laughs> ja, ich habe auch diese, diesen Wahl gemacht. Ja, ich, war, ich habe auch in Deutschland gelebt. So I also lived in Germany uh, for a little bit before I actually started to come more to the East. So I can definitely relate to that. Arthur, vielen Dank. I think there's a lot of good tips for guys uh, who are our age maybe today and also a bit younger about how you can plan to set up uh, your life to be able to make that relocation move. You had to take a good bit of risk to do it. I think uh, nothing, nothing venture, nothing gain. I also had to do the same thing. Uh, and, and what's I think really valuable is that you, um, you went and you took a chance and you had a few months you know, uh, worth of savings in the beginning, but you already took that first step and then you didn't really know exactly what the path would be, but you had the idea that you wanted to live here. And I think today it's even more attractive because what we see with the COVID restrictions in terms of freedom and, you know, rule of law being 
Uh, you know, the disadvantages of when rule of law works maybe in the West have become more apparent. Uh, and we definitely have had more freedom here in Eastern Europe, uh, especially in Odessa and Ukraine for the last two years than most parts of uh, the West. And, you know, the cost of living is less. I don't think it will continue to be that way forever in Ukraine. I think the economy is improving. But, um, yeah, it's even more attractive in terms of cost of living today to move. And the women are just as beautiful, even if they're problematic in other ways. But I have a lot of videos about that topic on my channel. Uh, vielen Dank. And, uh, yeah, we will see you in the next video. Auf Wiedersehen um, von Odessa, Mama, in the Ukraine. Ciao, ciao. So now that I'm back home, I actually realized I forgot to, well, we forgot to uh, point out that Arthur also has a YouTube channel of his own. It's about artificial intelligence. So if you are interested in that subject, then that is a good channel for you to go and watch. I'm going to put a link to Arthur's channel down below, Arthur France's channel about artificial intelligence. So you can go and check out some of his videos and also subscribe to it if you are passionate like he is about artificial intelligence and the research lab that he set up here in Odessa, Ukraine. Now, I also forgot to mention that uh, I made a podcast uh, maybe about six, seven months ago that a lot of guys who've moved to Ukraine, who've become my consulting clients or participants in my high-level consultation group, Slavic Utopia Secrets Ukraine, have actually referred to because they found it very valuable. And it's one where I basically tell you you need to avoid being billy nomads if you move here to ukraine so if you do come here and you you know a lot of guys they think they're just going to go out on dates with beautiful women all the time and that's great maybe in the beginning but after three four or five months that's going to get a little bit old and you actually going to want to integrate properly here in ukraine and make friends whether that happens to be with other expats or with locals uh, here in Ukraine and that podcast was very valuable and in that podcast I refer to uh, some German guys that actually helped me uh, with integrating and networking here in Odessa when I came maybe it's about you know seven eight nine years ago so I actually forget how long ago it was and one of those two German guys in fact was Arthur himself so vielen uh, Dank to Arta and also to Michael who helped me integrate here. And um, you know, in my high level consultation group, we have a whole busy live stream dedicated to how you're gonna integrate, how you're going to be able to network, make friends, in addition to kind of the more nuts and bolts of a move here, like with the visa situation, maybe citizenship eventually. And also I'm standing here in a nice view out over the Black Sea and the city of Odessa behind me. And uh, we're actually at the end of season three of the high level consultation group it opens up once or twice a year and the final live stream is always about real estate the absolutely amazing opportunities that are here to buy great real estate like here in the historic center of odessa so i've got a link that down below as well it's on demand and then the next time season when it opens up you can already have your spot reserved because i normally limit it to 10 uh spots on every season so this is really the end of today's video. Uh, it's a little bit cloudy today. We're like, you know, mid-November here in Odessa and uh, still a nice view over the city center here at sunset. So I'll see you in the very next video. Dopo bacina, disvedania. Ciao, ciao from Odessa Mama in Ukraine. Sar Experience.